By the end of today's lesson, we will examine why Nehemiah decided to restore the wall of Jerusalem and reform or revive the Jewish law, appreciate Nehemiah's feelings and behavior in restoring the wall and reforming Jewish worship, and identify ways to restore worn parts of the faith community and revive traditions that honor God. The book of Nehemiah is about one man's love, dedication, and faithfulness to both his God and his country. It is a journal or memoir of one man's determination to make a difference for his people, to rebuild in spite of enormous opposition from their enemies and detractors. The book demonstrates how one person can motivate a whole nation to accomplish things they would not be able to do under normal circumstances. It demonstrates Nehemiah's love for his nation and his personal sacrifice of an enviable position for the cause of his people. This kind of sacrifice exemplifies the type of unselfish and motivational service always needed when a great work is to be achieved. The narrative also demonstrates God's faithfulness and authority over humankind's affairs when we put all our problems, wills, and desires into His hands. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, But now I said unto them, You know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. After three days of rest, Nehemiah takes a few men with him by night and surveys the city. He rides around the city to see for himself the extent of the destruction. The office of a cup-bearer in ancient times was a high and respectable position. Such a tour with a person of such prominence, the king's cup-bearer, would require a big entourage and fanfare. But Nehemiah chose to tour the city privately to avoid public exposure or attracting attention. After getting a handle on the situation, Nehemiah now calls an assembly and tells the leaders his plans. He first calls their attention to their plight, reminding them of their suffering and the deplorable condition of their city. Nehemiah, as an individual, could be excluded from the suffering, being one of the highest positions of that time, a cupbearer to the most powerful king. However, he identifies with the suffering of his people. He sees himself as a member of the suffering community. He never allowed his personal comfort in the king's palace to blind him to the suffering of his people in Judah or to separate him from the community of his people. Rather, he includes himself, saying, You see the distress that we are in. Nehemiah does not bother to point out that the walls have been in disrepair for almost a hundred years. Instead, he appeals to what they can do in the immediate situation. To assure them of the possibility of the work ahead and gain their support, Nehemiah tells the assembly how God's hand had been with him in the plan and how God has so far provided for him in the project. Multiple times, both Nehemiah and his contemporary, Ezra, speak of the good hand of the Lord being upon them, as a sign of his blessing. As the work continues, the news of the project reaches neighboring countries. They scornfully laugh at them. They deride them and mockingly ask what they are doing and suggest Nehemiah's actions are seditious. In answer to this challenge of his authority, Nehemiah affirms the ultimate source of his authority, even though he actually has the king's backing. Nehemiah attributes his authority to the God of heaven. The hecklers have no right to stop the work, and neither do they have portion in Jerusalem. Nehemiah is confident in the Lord he serves that the work will be completed, whether these people like it or not. And that brings us to our lesson for today. In our lesson today, we read that once Nehemiah safely arrived in Jerusalem, he went around inspecting the city walls at night and conducted a thorough survey of exactly what damage needed to be repaired. If we are truly concerned about rebuilding parts of our lives, we need to prayerfully assess what will be required. And so this week, let's make a target of prayer in our own life. And let's be honest with ourselves. Let's ask God to show us exactly what steps need to be taken. As only when we change lazy or sinful habits can we be freed to be who God has called us to be. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to iLights. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for whom we truly seek is you.